So you want to be a top stoic baller because you've heard all the biggest influencers and athletes talk about it. But how are you actually applying the principles of stoicism during a football game? How would you react if the referee made an unfair decision against you that caused you to lose the game? How would you react to missing an open goal that cost your team crucial points in an important game and having your teammates, coaches, family and friends angry or upset with you? How would you react if opponents insulted your family or you personally throughout the whole game or kicked and fouled you at every point possible to provoke a reaction in the hopes of getting you sent off? Would you be angry, frustrated, sad? Would you feel that life has cheated you? Would you feel the need to get revenge on the person who has wronged you? Or would you feel like Mario Balotelli and think, why always me? These would all be normal reactions for most people, but not for a Stoic. The Stoics say, although we don't have much control over what happens to us, we do have control over how it affects us, and we must use this control to great effect. Stoicism is a way of life developed by some of the greatest minds our world has ever seen, and is still used today by all elite performers independent of their industry. As I've just shown you, there are a lot of ways your mental strength and stoicism will be tested in a football game. And I hope this video gives you some simple tactics you can use right now to improve your mental game. In football, life, and anything you do, you can rarely control what happens. This is a simple thing to say, but how many of you really believe it? You say you're a stoic on the pitch, but as soon as the ref makes the wrong call or your teammate doesn't pass you the ball, you start moaning and complaining and it completely throws off your game. Whereas the one game you focused on keeping your emotions in check, you actually seemed to play very well and were in quite a nice flow. It's not a coincidence that the people in your team that criticize others the most are quick to let negative emotions take over and are often the most inconsistent players. This is because they are constantly fighting an uphill battle of fighting against their emotions instead of using them positively. Of course, like any other player, they make mistakes, but with every mistake, they seem to get more and more frustrated until they finally explode. Maybe this player is you, and if so, you definitely need this video. Sometimes it's not even our own mistakes where this shows. We've all had a player who plays Bruh. terribly with us and let our anger take over. When we don't keep our emotions in check when things happen that you simply can't control, you're doomed. Instead, when these things happen in games, this is when you get a chance to really practice your self-talk, which is a massive skill. An example of this is when a ref makes a bad call. Tell yourself he has made the call, there's nothing I can do to get the call changed. Then tell yourself, let's just focus on my performance, which I can control. A tip would be to develop some phrases you can use that are personal to you. It may be recenter, win for what's important now, or maybe even something physical you can do to get yourself back in flow, like focusing on your breathing. When you notice yourself getting angry and out of the zone, focus on small things you can do to immerse yourself in the game, like scanning or sprinting for a ball. You are going to die one day, 100% nailed in and confirmed. Sit with that feeling for a bit. Even picture yourself on your deathbed with all your loved ones around you. What feels important in that moment? Was it your relationships? Was it what you accomplished? Or the memories? I'm not here to tell you what's important for you, but I can almost guarantee that on your deathbed, you will not be thinking about whatever it is that bothers you in games or trainings. In fact, you will probably only remember the highest highs and the lowest lows, but will have an appreciation for both. Memento Mori is the concept of using the perspective of death to fuel what you do in the now. This means when you come across a challenge or a problem and it's really bothering you, you can remind yourself of your eventual death to remind you what's actually important in life. An example of this through a football lens is after a game where your team lost, you played bad and were even a large reason why your team took an L. We've all been here as footballers and it's not a nice place to be. However, instead of letting this game dictate our emotions and energy for the rest of the day or multiple days like most footballers do, you can use the concept of memento mori to decide if this moment is actually worth grieving over or whether you can find ways to appreciate the lesson learned and channel the negative energy into your next workout or training. Whenever I've had a bad game, and decided that it was not going to get to me, I would arrive the next day at training and be in killer mode. My tackles are stronger, my passes are crisp, and my dribbling is electric. After these trainings, I reflect and think, man, I wish I always felt this way. This is the power of using a negative event as fuel for a positive cause. If there's one thing you can take from this video, it's reminding yourself that you will die, and the problem you're facing will not seem as significant. You may have heard a coach say to you, you can never lose. You can only win or learn. Although this is slightly cheesy, the Stoics believe this 100%. The Stoics believe that every difficulty you face offers an opportunity to develop ourselves in what they describe as the four cardinal virtues for life, which are courage, 
wisdom, temperance, and judgment. With every challenge in their life, they would attempt to change their perspective on the situation by looking at how they can develop these four virtues for a good life. An example of developing courage through a tough situation in a footballer's life would be stepping up to take the game-saving penalty that no one else was willing to take. You step up in the situation and whether you score or miss, you will undoubtedly develop your courage. And the next time you go to do it, that courage muscle will have one more rep and it will not feel as challenging as the last time. An example of wisdom would be doing anything stupid in a game and being able to learn from it. Maybe you tried to make a solo play to win the game when there was a teammate wide open. These moments give us a chance to develop our wisdom, but only if you can recognize them and reflecting on it, and then make a decision on what you would do next time. Temperance is one we can probably all remember a specific moment for when we lacked in that area. Maybe you lost your temper and made a dirty play on the opponent that got you and your team in trouble, or shouted at one of your teammates when it was a bit unnecessary. Our temperance will constantly be challenged by opponents and the world in general. So developing that virtue is an essential for any stoic baller. And finally, judgment, which is one of the most essential skills in football as the game offers you thousands of micro decisions to make throughout the game. And the more good judgments you make, the better of a player you will be. By viewing challenges and obstacles as chances to develop yourself in these four virtues, your mentality in football and life will be among the 1%. As we live in a why always me world, not a world where we constantly reflect on our actions. Being a stoic baller is not an easy thing by any means. It will take years of consistent learning, self-reflection and failure. However, the reward on this path is becoming someone who is unfazed by whatever the beautiful game throws at them, as well as whatever the world throws at them. Their teammates look at them in the big moments, coaches trust them to make the best on-field decisions and opponents hate playing against them as their head is impenetrable. If being a stoic baller is something you want to commit to and are looking for the next step, I've made a completely free stoic footballer guide which I think you will really enjoy if you've made it this far into the video. It will ask you for your email and you may see me in your inbox from time to time, but those as well as this guide will all be well worth your time if you're a serious baller. But now is that time to make your next move on the chessboard of life? Choose wisely my friend.